All right, you guys, today we are getting naked with the gorgeous and illustrious Cynthia Stant. Cynthia is a renowned speaker, a consultant to six and seven figure businesswoman, and a mentor who helps powerful leaders own and claim the life they desire by mixing the woo with the practical, the intuitive with the mechanical. And she discusses all of this on her podcast, Inner Feminine Beast, which, by the way, is ranked 1.5% globally out of 3.2 million uh, shows on iTunes. Welcome, Cynthia. Thank you so much for having me, Colette. I'm really looking forward to today's conversation. Yeah, so am I. Uh, You and I briefly connected, um, what was it, like over a year ago now? Gosh, has it been that long? I don't know. You were a guest on my show and I just mm-hmm. know we hit it off right away. Um, it just, you know, there's that zing factor sometimes. That's what I call it. You can't really explain it, but when you just see that person and they light you up and you know, there's definitely a future relationship there. Um, okay. You and I have kind of just been watching each other on yeah. social media and I, you know, I'm always so flattered that every time there's a, a post that I really put my heart into, there's Colette, you know, leaving an emoji, dropping a, you know, some kind of comment of some sort. And I see you too. Like I always see you, I see you showing up. And even just the other day I had to send you a DM and like what you're sharing and what you're putting out there really resonates with me. And it's what I love seeing and what I want social media to be used for. So yeah, I just yeah. think it's great that we found each other and that's the power of the internet. I completely agree. And beyond the internet, that's the power of our like hidden magic, our our force that connects us all, uh, which is what I want to dive into you with in this conversation. So um, before we get into that, tell us a little bit about, you know, what was the setup? What was the circumstance that led you to creating such a magical, wonderful life that you live today? You know, um, it's funny because you know that there's something, don't you? Oh, yeah. There's always people who create magic and miracles don't just like live very comfortable lives where all of a sudden it just happens. Something happens to them where all of a sudden they realize that it wasn't actually happening to them. It was happening for them, by them, so that they would actually make those moves. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like I lived a very comfortable life growing up. I feel I was very comfortable, comfortable, comfortable all the time. Um, and then when I got older, I did something kind of (laughs) wild. I met my bartender on my lunch break and I just was absolutely infatuated and just head over heels. I remember the second I met him and his smile just like made my heart explode. And uh, three months later, we found out we were having a baby and I decided um, to get married. And turns out we really like each other. February, which is next month now, will be 12 years that we've been married. We now have two children and, you know, we've been best friends throughout, but um, we've gone on such a spiritual journey together. And I think, you know, once I decided to get married, I really wanted to grow up very quickly. I'm the youngest in my family by seven years. I feel like I was kind of always treated like the princess. And that really only enabled me. It didn't really help me to prepare for real life and real world. And so, you know, I really wanted to be mature and responsible for the actions that I took. And I decided to grow up almost overnight become a parent and a, an adult all at the same time. And, um, you know, with that, I made a lot of mistakes, a lot of really big mistakes. And the funny part is I realized that those mistakes were actually some of the best blessings that ever happened, right? Our failures are our best teachers. But my husband and I, you know, we decided to do everything on our own. So financially, we we're going to provide for our children. We were going to, you know, become the wealthy, abundant people that we always dreamed of being, and we were going to do it our way. And um, with that, there was mentors, there was decision making, and there was investing. And I think at one point, you know, we really decided to make a big move. And sometimes big moves equal, you know, big rewards. And sometimes big risk also are big failures. And I think for us, this was a really big failure. But my husband and I, we really studied a lot, became apprentices in real estate. And we decided to do this on our own. And it really didn't work out for us when we did it on our own. You know, it's one thing okay. doing off a theory and being somebody's sidekick versus you being the person in the front line. But um, we ended up experiencing a bankruptcy. Now, technically, okay. it's his bankruptcy. It was never affected my credit or whatever. But I mean, come on, when you're married, what's his is yours, right? And yeah, yeah. Uh, financially speaking, we got to the point where we had two children and $200 in our pocket. 
And, you know, I went to college. <laughs> I have a degree in advertising, a minor in, adver- uh, excuse, excuse me, a degree in marketing, a minor in advertising from the same college that the president of the United States went to, a good school. My husband yeah. has a master's degree. Um, we both had really high executive corporate positions before this happened. And like, we just got to the point where it felt like the absolute bottom. And it just like, you know, obviously not having money was hard on our relationship. I hid it from the world. So I felt a lot of shame. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like, I was just this ball of wasted potential and I just felt so lost and to be honest, I felt angry and I pointed a lot of fingers and I thought he was going to make it right. And I thought maybe a boss would have hired me more by now, like all these things. Like I just got to this point where I just felt the lowest of low and it kind of made me feel depressed. And I was, I remember staring in the mirror wearing a bathrobe for like three weeks and I had my glasses on because I was crying all the time. I wear contacts now. And I just remember like my hair looking like Beetlejuice and I looked in the mirror And I just remember being like, this is not who I am. Like, this might have been who I was, and that's how I got here. But something today has got to change. Like, I could could feel in me that this was not it. And so, you know, we hear about it all the time, people who have created great success in their life. And it sounds cliche, but truly, I'm sure you can agree with me, Colette. It literally is. Well, I can agree with you and from experience (laughs) agree with you. It's a decision. And I decided in that moment that I was going to be on this journey of self-discovery and and being and attaining the highest version of myself. And so that's where it began. (laughs) That's where it began. In the bathroom. In the bathroom. Yeah. This house that I bought when I was 22. (laughs) And I just remember, um, I'm so, I go back to that vision of myself looking in the mirror and I can remember being in that moment, but I don't remember being her. Like she doesn't exist anymore, but I'm grateful for her. That moment was so important. <laughs> a lot has happened since then. A lot has happened. Yeah. And I, I'm curious, do you, how do you, okay. So I'll just, uh, let me preface this next question. Just today, just this morning, actually, when I was in the shower, because, you know, magic happens in the shower. um, It occurred to me um, for my for my own, like I'm on the journey, too, and 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 I've had the peaks, I've had the valleys. I'm in a I'm coming out of a valley now. Let me just claim I'm out of it. Like but the specific thing that occurred for me this morning that I'd love for you to to talk about here um, in reference to what you just shared is in order to sort of elevate or rise beyond the current circumstance, the a key element must be acceptance of the circumstance yeah. as opposed to the criticism of it or the denial of it or the resistance to it. In other words, it's a, it's a yes to this, even though I don't like it, I don't necessarily want it. It's an overcoming all of that shame, guilt, anger, whatever it is that it, that that is being brought up in the circumstance, right? It's an it's an acceptance of it. It's a yes, finding the way to that yes for this, even this, in order to have the next or the wanted. What are your thoughts on that? It's really when you are able to get out of the victim mindset that everything's happening to you, that you really hone your power. It's really just understanding that nothing is happening to you. It's happening for you, by you. And in fact, even further, it is you. Mm -hmm. Everything on the outside of you is a reflection that's happening with internally. And so therefore, if you can really start looking on the outside and realize that everything on the outside is there to bring awareness as a focal point to what's actually happening on the inside, that's Mm -hmm. when you can change everything. And so when you see things that you don't like in your life, you realize that didn't just randomly happen. It's because of I'm the cause that creates the effect. I go first and everything responds. Mm -hmm. So what I do on the inside, and it's it's not necessarily what I do that's as important as who I am that way. So I really started focusing on who is it that I am? And a lot of us don't know. We don't even know what we want, (laughs) right? And so you have to realize you have to dig deep and everybody has a a different way of labeling this. And that's just what it is. But I think truly for me that the Valley going up really came with the idea of a higher power. 
Okay. And you, you know, you can call it anything you want, whether it's yeah. God, source, universe. What do, you, um, what do you prefer? Just for- I'm glad that you asked that because it's actually changed. And I think, you know, Me as too. you go deeper and deeper into this, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you're always changing. And things that you really stood by, preach to the world, they change too. Like you yeah. constantly are changing and pivoting. And if you're not, that's dangerous, yeah. right? That means yeah. you're not growing. But yeah. when I first started getting into this, um, I think because I grew up, you know, going to Catholic school and I'm that girl that literally got kicked out of theology class four times just for asking simple questions. I kind of didn't like this idea of God and God for me was, um, you know, just, just strict. And, you know, I've never followed the rules. It's probably why I'm, I'm I really excel as an entrepreneur. <laughs> like I can't, mm-hmm. every job I ever had was very impressive jobs, but I never can, more, can excuse me, um, had them for more than two years. I was either, you know, quit or fired. <laughs> so I not really the best of following other people's rules, but uh, so God wasn't like something that I really resonated with. And so in the beginning, I used to always say universe. It just felt more comfortable mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. Um, the more and more I studied, though, I understand the difference between universe and God. And I think really after I started my own business is when I truly became a God girl. <laughs> so I do um, refer to my higher power as God. Um, I do refer to my higher self as inner feminine beast, which you said is the name of my podcast, but also my brand. It really is mm-hmm. just the essence of my soul. It's the higher version of me. But yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, a lot of us, we don't even know what it is that we want. And that's the first thing is just to give yourself permission to play and, and to really dig deep and ask yourself, what do you want? And if you don't know, you ask for help. Yeah. We're so supported and we just forget that because we look at things in the physical. Mm-hmm. I think we both mm-hmm. know the physical isn't really who we are. It's who we were. As I said before, mm-hmm. all of our past feelings, thoughts, and actions got us here. It's not who we are. And yeah. so when we want to know that, it all starts within. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think finding my higher power and just really starting to ask questions. When you ask questions, you receive answers. So I think that's a big part of it. Yeah, I agree. And to the point about, you know, um, finding out what you want, those of us that are like yourself and myself and uh, others like us that are um, here to guide beyond like, not what do you think you can have based on what you've already done or the body of knowledge that you currently have? Like, what is that? inner feminine beast what does that free spirit or the the higher self what is the ideal version of you want to experience or want and i find a lot of times too that um we don't necessarily know because we don't even know we can go there right like we think that our um what's available to us is limited by the physical that we're the physical experience that we're having, especially based on the past that we have. So then getting to who am I before I go to and what do I want? Right? That's that can be very liberating. And then sometimes like from there, what you thought you want, you no longer really want. It's actually you want something completely different. Um, what are your like what's your experience with that? I know you work with women who kind of come to that realization for themselves. So what does that often look like? I think too, like sometimes what we think we want is just the means. Like everybody wants money, right? But money is just a means. Means to what? Like, do you yeah. actually know what the end result is? Um, mm. when I talk about inner feminine beast, that's exactly what it is. It's the end result. It's the highest version of you. It's that vision, that that ideal aim of, of, of your true potential. And so when you really think about the life that you would be living, what is that end result? And so, you know, for me, <laughs> it was very easy to decide what I wanted in the beginning. And I think it can be easy for any of our listeners. If you don't know what you want, just think about what you don't want. And then the opposite is what you do, right? That's the first step is like, oh, okay, well, I don't want to be, you know, broken on food stamps anymore, okay, right? So what would I want instead? A a reliable income. Um, You know, I don't want to be angry at my husband anymore because of our circumstances. So what do we want? A loving relationship where we go into it. It's like, you just do the opposites. And those are the baby steps. It's really all the beginning is about inertia. What goes in motion stays in motion, just building momentum. And just, you know, I, I look at it like this. If you're on the highway and you're driving a car, you know, there's those little dents on the side of the road when you hit them because you're not focused, you're not really paying attention to where you're supposed to be going. You're kind of aimlessly floating because you're on autopilot. You hit those little bumps. You're supposed to, oh, okay, refocus, redirect, and keep moving forward. But sometimes what happens is we hit the bumps and we panic because we're really all loose, all over the place. We throw our hands up and we slam into the ditch. Now, once you hit the ditch, 
<laughs> you're not stuck there forever, but it's definitely going to take more momentum to get back on up into the road. And then your job is to redirect. Now you can easily hit the bumps again. You can easily hit the ditch again, but your job is to contain that momentum and stay focused as you do it. Wherever the focus goes is where the momentum goes. And so really in the beginning for me, it was just, okay, little things. What do I want? What do I want? What do I want? And I think it really was about in the, the beginning, because this I'll tell you the evolution, how it's changed, mm -hmm. was really starting to get more into embracing my masculine. I, again, for me, I was really, again, kind of that enabled princess. I was very comfortable daydreaming and frolicking and, and, and receiving and, and I, you know, but when I say the brand, like inner feminine beast, it's, it's that combination of femininity and masculinity. And as your listeners know, we're not talking about gender, you know, or, right. sex. you know, we're talking about the, the, those qualities, those traits of masculine and femininity. And, um, it's not necessarily the balance of the two, because I'm not 50% in my feminine, 50% in my masculine, but understanding how to right. get out and have them work for me. So when I, you know, decided I'm not going to be this version of myself anymore, the bathrobe version, right? Um, I decided to do something about it. And I really focused on number one, who is it I want to be? And then what would she be doing? And so when you go inside and ask, who do you want to be? And you think about how would she think? How would she feel? And what would she be doing today? Mm -hmm. And let go of any of the reasoning and things why you can't. And just today, make a move. Every day counts. Mm -hmm. Every day matters. Just shift a little bit into acting like and being like her. You're going to get her results. Um, you probably heard of this. And I think Bob Proctor like made this really popular. And my husband overheard this. So I want to talk about it. But I always say, you know, aligned thoughts plus aligned feelings plus aligned actions equals aligned results. And my husband overheard me saying that one day. He's like, Cynthia, that's a little extra. And then he's like, aligned, aligned, aligned. What's all this alignment? Do you really have to say that? Because he goes, aren't thoughts plus feelings plus actions, you know, equal results? And I said, absolutely. But here's the problem. Poverty is a result. A divorce is a result. Illness is a result. Bankruptcy, Sorry. it's a result. And I'm not available, like unsubscribe to any of these results. I'm looking for the aligned result, which is a desired result. So therefore, mm. it's literally a formula. If you think, feel, and act like the version of you that has the things that you want, well, then you will get them. And so that was like the introductory thing for me after, you know, mm -hmm. learning law of attraction to really kind of be that version. And yep. so the next thing you know, I went from this woman who was so enabled to really just becoming one of the best business women out in the industry. Yeah. Um, for me, it ended up being sales. I'm a woman who's obsessed with sales. Mm -hmm. And I know for a lot of people, they're like, ew, what? Sales? Because, you know, people can label sales as scammy, spammy, sleazy, slimy, all the freaking S words. I can't stand that. For me, though, um, you know, with this spiritual journey, I really started meditating a ton, comfortable just being in my own energy. I could feel every time I would sit there, I would feel like my own bubble, my own aura. I'd feel my yeah. own energy. And what happens so is good. eventually... I got to the point when other people came around me, I could separate my energy from theirs and I could actually feel that what they wanted, what they needed. Mm -hmm. It's almost like an energetic reading that I was doing when mm -hmm. I was doing sales. And so when I met with somebody, I could see their potential. I could see the mm -hmm. solution that they wanted, being very intuitive. I could put into words what they weren't able to say. And I could connect to them with our beautiful minds, connect our hearts. And I could just say the thing that really helped them feel supported. So for me, sales is about being spiritual. It's about yeah. being a service. It's about being a solution. There's nothing more sexy to me than that. So I really embrace being a saleswoman. And not only was I a saleswoman, whatever company, whatever corporation, whatever industry I went to, I ended up becoming number one, like beating the boys, you know, number one on the leaderboards. And for me, it was so rewarding because this was now for the first time ever where I wasn't relying on something outside of me to be the source mm -hmm. of my success or my happiness. I was using my own God-given gifts my intuition, <clears throat> my, my, my ability to serve others. It felt mm -hmm. so good and rewarding. Mm -hmm. So then what happens is my life transformed. Sales is beautiful because you're never capped, right? Like give me mm -hmm. any commission job. I don't want a salary. Salary means you're like stopping my potential. Mm -hmm. I can go mm -hmm. and go and I can serve more and I can help. And I wasn't even working a ton because I'm not like, messaging or calling every single person on the list, I could intuitively feel who need my services. I could intuitively mm. feel like how I can help because of my meditation, because of the mentoring mm. I was doing, because of all the discipline, spiritual practices. 
And so I, a lot of things happened, but within two years of looking in the bathrobe mirror, I became a self multimillionaire. Yeah. Now that was fun and that was exciting and it changed Mm -hmm. my life. But as you can imagine, this led to a different spiritual experience. Mm-hmm. One where, like you said, there's always the rhythm, the the valleys, the the tip, the, the, the peaks, and all the things in between. Mm-hmm. So, you think you know when you get to a certain end result, it's still not the end. <laughs> You're, that's just a version I could imagine. But right, there's more and more and more after that. I literally joke around. I call it um, like a Mario game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure you have questions. I want to go back and forth and not just be the talking. But like, think about it like this. Um, if you go back to the old school Nintendo and there's right. the, the, the little, light. yeah, the gray square box, right? Yeah. And it goes, do, 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 right? And I always think it's funny because the original Mario, you can't go backwards, right? It's very more like real life because now you can have virtual reality. You can go all these different ways and all that, but you can only go forward in Mario. And when you first find out about this game, because I'm using this one because we've all played it. You're like, okay, A button, B button. Got this. This is easy. And you start walking. And all of a sudden, this cute little mushroom comes up to you. You're like, oh, my gosh, look how cute. It's a little mushroom. Poof, right? All of a sudden, yeah. you're like, what? Fuck, nothing kills me? Are you kidding me? Okay. All right. Fine. So you go back to the beginning, and now you have to move forward again. Now this time, you're like, oh, it's a cute little turtle. Like, literally a turtle. There's nothing scary about little turtles. Well, that kills you, too. And you're going through this journey again and again. Each time, you're learning from the mistakes, and you're, you're mm-hmm. dying and losing lives, and you have to restart, and you have all these mistakes and failures, and then you find out these certain green ones have plants that come out and eat them, the little green tunnels. And some of them you can go down, like you learn the lessons and you get through it. And at the end you jump and you, you realize you catch the flag and all the fireworks go off and you celebrate. Oh my God, I finally got through this. That was kind of fun. I know I made some mistakes, but like, it was totally fine, but woo, celebrating. And the next thing you know, you're like, hold on, where am I now? Like you're in a completely different level. Now everything's black and blue and the little, you know, turtles that you thought were scary before because they killed you now are shooting fireballs at you, right? Like it's like every time you level up, there's a new experience. You really are the director of your life. Like, you know, there's Mm. actors that are there that you hire, that you fire, you change the scenery and all of it is Mm. there to support you. But every time you level up, there's new lessons to be learned. And if you, you know, even when you pass the entire game, well, yeah. there's a whole new Mario game. Like it's yeah. just seen growing in different levels and different things. Um, and once you feel like you know it all, it's because you went through that one level 20 times, you're going to get it this time. You go to the new one, you're brand new. It's mm-hmm. how it feels every time. Yeah. 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 Well, and I mean, that's, I mean, that video games are li- the perfect analogy because from my perspective, the whole point of life is to continue to grow, to experience the pitfalls, right? The um, and 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 those wins as well. But there is always a next level, and I'm curious about what your thoughts are on the purpose of life. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy they asked this because it's been like really something I've been meditating a lot on lately because I had an answer. But I can see through my evolution how things kind of are shifting. But, you know, I'm somebody who coaches women in sales, but I also coach in spirituality and mastering mindset, meditation, metaphysics, and manifestation. Because to me, again, sales is spiritual. If I'm going to teach you how to sell, yeah, I can teach you all those systems, how all the structures, I can help you how to scale to some figures and beyond and all that. But none of it's going to be worth it if you don't understand who you are right? Because it's not what we do, it's who we are. So that mindset, that meditation, like all of that is essential for you to have success. Um, So people who are, you know, learning uh, uh, the spiritual sides from me, they'll say, you know, what is the purpose of life? And for me, it was so easy. Like it was right away. I was like, well, it's to fulfill your desires. (laughs) And they're like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, well, there, you have to realize like your desires Colette, are different than mine. And perhaps yeah. maybe, you know, we all want to be wealthy and be in a loving relationship, but like we all make up a greater whole, but we're unique individuals and your desires are unique for a reason. Mm-hmm. Your desires are there. And I will tell you this, if you have a burning desire, I know you like know exactly what I mean. Like when you have a moment to yourself and you're sipping coffee, you give yourself doing this and having this. When you're alone in the shower and you're shampooing your hair, your mind goes to that version of you that's, you know, experiencing whatever it is that you desire. When you're alone in the car and sometimes you park your car and you're saying like, how did I get here? Because you were like daydreaming about that thing. That thing is your desire and it's meant to make you move. Because if you don't move, if you don't go for that desire, I can tell you right now, 
it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I call mm-hmm. that the feather, the brick, the bus. Your desire in the beginning is kind of like um, almost like Frozen with Elsa and that little <laughs> siren. She's like, I can hear you, but I won't, right? Like, and she <laughs> wants you to go into the unknown. Always wants to make you go somewhere that you haven't been before because obviously that's how you're going to get results you haven't gotten before. Yeah. Like yeah. In the beginning, it's like the soft whisper. I call it the feather mm-hmm. where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, I had this idea. Wouldn't that be nice? Oh, I'm alone by myself. That'd be cool. But then you ignore mm-hmm. it because what happens? You're like, I'm so stuck in my real life. I you know, got to listen to my boss. I got to do this paperwork all the time. Mm-hmm. The kids need me. So you ignore it. Mm-hmm. But then what happens is the desire keeps showing up. It then comes as the brick where for mm-hmm. me, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I thought by making the company that I worked for, you know, as a senior sales manager, be very successful, that I would have more opportunity. It would be quicker. And then maybe I start a company with them or something. Maybe, I, you know, I, I didn't mm-hmm. imagine doing it on my own, even though that's what I really wanted. So that was the, the feather at first, but then the brick, well, things started getting really complicating at work. My commissions were being taken here and there, or there was, you know, controversy and competition happening and mm-hmm. but whatever, whatever, mm-hmm. it's fine. It's okay. I'm really busy. I don't have time for this. There's no way I could start my own company right now. Things are really moving here. You know, I made up all these excuses mm-hmm. until all of a sudden, if you ignore the feather, you ignore the brick, then comes the bus. bus. Oof, right? There I was, yeah. you know, made this company, a figure company within one year, managed 85 people, hired every single one of them and was a top producer, was fired by some HR girl that I never even met before. Right. Okay. But did that happen okay. to me or was that happening for me by me? Because that voice within me, yeah. that desire was saying, if you're not going to move on your own mama, I'm going to mm-hmm. make sure it happen so that you do something different because mm-hmm. I was meant to fulfill and to keep moving and to go towards my desire. So just be careful because look, if you don't fulfill your desires, life's going to change and you're not meant to be comfortable. If you're comfortable, you're not growing. And again, you're meant to grow because if you don't grow, you die mentally. Mm -hmm. If you're not growing physically, if you're not growing spiritually, if you're not growing energetically, if you're not growing, you will die. So your desires Mm -hmm. are there to make you move. You have to go after them. But I think what happens is I realized that my desires are there to serve me. And I became a woman who understood how to manifest literally, you know, things fall out of the sky, kind of manifest magic and miracle every single day. Yeah. What can tend to happen is when you experience a lot of success, even, and I think it even happens more when you're at higher consciousness, Mm -hmm. you can easily fall into your humanness, your, your ego side, Mm -hmm. um, where your desires almost sometimes turn into like obsessions Mm. where you know you can have anything and everything. So what do you really go for? Do you lose the vision of what your true aim is? You kind of get lost in the materialistic side of things. Yeah. I think for me, again, mm. you know, being on food stamps and <laughs> literally having absolutely no money. We had $200 combined. And it wasn't even mine. Yeah. To within my fifth month of starting my own business, having over $70,000 cash funds, like consistently. Yeah. It changes yeah. you. And yeah. sometimes you lose sight or take things for granted. And never was I doing anything unethical or, you know, doing things negative, mm-hmm. but I just got lost a little bit in the human side because for me, this is everything my imagination could possibly attain. Like, what is it besides this? But yeah. It's so important that you constantly are visioning things that you don't know. You, mm-hmm. you when you just... When you start making tons of money, but you don't want to have a purpose for it, it gets dangerous. Mm. Yeah. So it's like, okay, there's a version of me that wasn't filling my potential or serving millions of people all over, making millions of dollars and helping them. And now there's a version that is, but then what's next? You have to keep growing. And so you kind of go through these looping patterns until you understand how to break that. And that's all just self-discovery and and surrendering and asking for help and support at each and every level. I think the more successful you become, the more support that you need spiritually and it's, in the physical. I think you're absolutely right. I I know from my own experience as I was examining and it's an ongoing examination, but there was certainly a point in time where when I was looking at my relationship with money and success, um, wh- the biggest fear that I uncovered was um, being out of alignment, like falling out of alignment, falling off my path and my purpose um, (laughs) because I like to have fun and I like this and I like that. And I, and I have a, I have a history of 
indulgence and overindulgence and you know some of the people in my like close people in my in my life historically um have had a lot of wealth and have like a lot of self-destructive behaviors as well which i fortunately was able to not go down not go down that dark that dark hole with them right but um but still i've like had that in my in my purview and so again this examination of the fe the fear of success let's say for myself is like oh i i will i will self destruct if i have so much freedom so much success so much money and resource i'm just going to blow it all and fuck it all up mm -hmm. do you know what i mean and so that was something that was an it was unconscious but then i i was able to take a look at that and reconcile that with to your point um really doubling down making a vow if you will vowing to god accepting my divine assignment <laughs> not that there's like one but you know like okay yes i accept i am here to teach what i know from a spiritual perspective to use the word god instead of universe to truly honor and and own that i do know some things directly from the divine as i understand it right and and that it's and it's okay like the old me would have been like well that's weird or whatever you know what i mean but um accepting the purpose that i believe and perceive at this stage of my journey that is that i am on that it, this is here for me so i can't fall off that path i can continue to to honor the path and the purpose by sharing it and 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 allow the success and all that comes with that to to support the the journey the path the purpose that whole thing so many good things um i remember in my last corporate job um, yeah, I was fired, but at the same time, it was one of the best experiences I ever went through. Um, I really did respect my boss at the time. She was like a mentor to me. And I remember on my very first day working for her, she said something to me that just gave me so much peace and so much freedom. And in fact, whenever I hire a new employee, it's the very first thing I ever say to them on their first day is I give you full permission to fuck up. Ooh. And I remember yeah. like, Cause you know, I'm, I'm that go-getter on day one. I was like thinking about how am I going to grow her company and, and what is, you know, my next promotion and like, how are you thinking that on day one? Like, how am I going like, to, yeah. and like, I didn't want to make mistakes. And she's like, if you're right. not making mistakes, then you're not going for it. Now, if you make the mistake mm. again, that's the issue. But like, if you're making mistakes, it means like you actually care and you're getting creative and you're, you know, making shit happen. If you're not, you're being comfortable and there's no growth that's going to come from being comfortable. And so I think about that, like, yeah, I've made a lot of fuck ups. I've made a lot of mistakes too. But every mm -hmm. time that it happens, the first thing is like, you're just, you know, kind of angry about yourself. You're like, Oh my God, I'm so smart. I've done, I've literally hired hundreds of thousands of dollars of mentors and they told me about <laughs> this stuff and it didn't make any sense until now. I've read every single mm -hmm. book on all these shelves yeah. and like, I, but they don't, didn't make sense until now. Like you have to fuck up for that thing to actually make sense for you. And mm -hmm. it's funny because you have clients, and you have students and you tell them again, again, this is going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen until they do it to themselves. They're like, Oh, now I get it. Right. Like it's just how we mm -hmm. are as humans. But I'm so grateful that we have those fuck ups because that's like hitting the ditch. You don't realize that you're not paying attention until you hit the ditch. And then you right. realize how much for granted you took about how wonderful a smooth ride is, right? And so um, when you talk about alignment, you know, I think a lot of times people get confused with that, but not only are we thinking, feeling and acting in alignment with the end result, but it's really, is our highest version of us, like our higher self spiritual version in alignment with our physical being. And right. if you go back to that, like Mario example, I really like think about this, but I, I do think this is all like a video game. Like I think, you know, because mm -hmm. as within, so without, this is the projection of what's happening within me. And so it's like a, a virtual reality, a, a, a game. And so if I am Mario, you can think of my higher self as the one holding the controller. Yeah. And she's like, jump idiot. Hey, hey, hey. And if I don't have that connection where I'm plugged in, Mm -hmm. I could be running into walls again, again, and again, and again, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you have to plug in. You have to make sure there's a good connection. You have to have that alignment between the person holding the controller and the person in the screen. And mm -hmm. if you're just dealing with the person in the screen, you're going to be falling into mushrooms and, and turtles like all damn day. 
this person, the higher version of you has a, sees you in the box. <laughs> it can, it can sense so much bigger picture. And so when you can tune in and tap into that, that's where that real alignment is. And so again, it's like your, your Mario version of you is going to fuck up. It's going to make mistakes, but it's not judging it or labeling it. It's just accepting it. And it's all about forgiveness. I think forgiveness is such a key thing that a lot of our society doesn't understand. Like forgiveness is not putting yourself on a pedestal and saying somebody else is beneath you. Forgiveness is realizing that you missed the mark. You forgot what your true aim was. You were building mm -hmm. momentum, but then you got lost in your human. You went in the ditch, mama. It's great. That yeah. you were, the reason you were making so much money is because you were serving and being a solution and using your God-given gifts to help others. And when you give, you're allowed to receive. But when you get kind of you know, immersed in that, the human side of it, well, you got lost and it's okay mm -hmm. to get lost, but are you willing to see it differently? Are you willing mm -hmm. to ask for help to get out of the dish? Are you willing to keep the momentum and stay more focused this time? Knowing that most likely because you're human, you're going to hit the dish again. But each time that you do, it's like, okay, I've been here before. Mm -hmm. I know I'm supported. I can get out of this. And am I willing to forgive myself and just admit I've missed the mark? And each and every time you devote yourself to becoming stronger. It's a muscle, just like going to the yeah. gym, your mind. It's a commitment. Yeah. Commitment's like jumping out of an airplane. Once you jump, you can't be like, I changed my mind, right? Like you're like, no, I'm in this. And the only way yeah. to get higher and higher and stronger and stronger is you have to realize your meat suit, your Mario, this Cynthia stance, um, mm -hmm. is only strong enough to do it on her own. You have to be connected mm -hmm. to that higher power of you. And yeah. for me, I had to have definitely God as my, my business partner, my, 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 my COO when I'm the CEO, yeah. right? Like my right yeah. guy, like it's a yeah. part of it. Definitely. Yeah. 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 I, um, I agree. And you're right. It's not about avoiding the ditch and like, it's, it's knowing that you're going to hit the ditch, but not like staying in the ditch and pounding the ground going, why am I here again? It's like, oh shit. Okay. Here I am. And oh, I actually sucks. know how the to get sucks. myself. It sucks every time. It does. It really, really it does. sucks. I'm not going to lie. It sucks. But it does. after it you're does. out of the ditch, you're so grateful for the ditch. Yeah. So hard to explain. There was, I'm going to share um, an experience that I had. Um, there was a time, one of the times I was in the ditch, um, and it felt like not not like a ditch, but like a, uh, you know, those like old wells that people fall down and like all the things, right? Like I was at the bottom of, the, of this well and the walls were dirt and I had been trying, this was a visual that it. Okay. I was like, oh, seriously? Or figured like. No, no, no. <laughs> no, this was a visual of yeah. like when I was sitting in meditation okay. reflection, yeah. right? I was shown, that's kind of how I get my, my guidance is yeah. It's packets of information. Sometimes it's visual. Yeah. Sometimes it's whatever. Um, but I was shown what, like, what I was doing so that I could help myself do differently. Right. And so I was in this well, and the walls of the well were dirt. And I had been clawing, trying to get myself out. So all this efforting, all this action, yeah. um, all this hard work, and I wasn't getting anywhere. In fact, I was just digging myself deeper in this well. The sides were getting broader and broader and harder to like exactly. what I thought I needed to climb up and out. And then so I'm like, all right, well, let me scream for help. Let me ask others for help because I can't help myself. Yeah. Okay. Note that little thought, right? And so I was like, help me, help me in this visual. And so people would like on the surface were like, where, what, where is she? Where? I can't find her. I hear her, but I can't find her. And um, so I was screaming louder and I was getting like, heavier and, and, and more powerless and more desperate and all of this energetically speaking. Um, and then it like a ladder dropped down. Um, and what I realized in that moment was the, it, this, it wasn't for me to scream for help out of desperation from a place of believing I couldn't help myself. It was the recognition that yes, people, the people are here and they can hear me, but screaming for help doesn't actually get me what I want. What I wanted, turns out, what I wanted was to know that I could elevate, I could rise up out of that pit of despair um, 
And <laughs> so the visual. So then I like levitated. I rose up <laughs> out of the pit. I didn't use the ladder, even though it was there for me had I chosen it, right? It was that was sort of the help from others, if you will. Mm -hmm. But I rose up out of this pit and like sprouted these wings and started soaring, flying around the sky to the awe and amazement of the people that were, you know, standing around who came to help me. Yeah. They were simply in awe of like, oh my God, what did you just do? How did you do this? Tell us how, show us how kind of thing. And so I share that here. <laughs> because it wasn't about scratching and clawing for me. And I can only speak for myself. I believe we all have different approaches to coming into our success or satisfaction or whatever it is that we're seeking. Um, but for me, it wasn't about the clawing. It wasn't about begging for help, even though, yes, others are there. Um, it was about recognizing that it's always been within me, yeah. that I could, I can rise in consciousness, if you want to think about it that way, or even the wings, I mean, come on, it's like an angel or, or even a phoenix or something, right? Like, but, and then the sharing of how I did it with those that were standing around wanting to know. So that's like how I was shown my purpose. Um, from inside the pit of despair, the ditch that we're talking about. So I don't know why I was inspired to share that here. Other than that's like, it, it feels resonant to what we're talking about. I Well, I just think too, that's like the loop that I had to go through again and again. And as I elevated in consciousness, as I elevated in manifestations and experiences, and as I, you know, came more into line of my greater vision, I still kept going through this human loop. And it's like, if you, the thing is, if you hit the same circumstances again and again and again and again, yeah. our, our job is to pass the test with grace because here's the thing. Yeah. God will give you anything that you can't handle. Right. And if you really right. want something, you're not getting it. It's because you're not necessarily showing that you can handle it. So for instance, like this is so silly, but I remember when, when I was in corporate, I worked for a very successful business consultant and I was honestly one of the first pioneers in social selling. So we had this tip, this certain way of selling programs online and we were really good at it. I mean, we did eight figures in our first year of working together. And, um, you know, I was kind of the one doing the sales and she was obviously the face of the company. And um, <laughs> it, it really took off really quick. So when I got fired, you know, I'm, I was teaching these sales strategies to eight figure people. Like people were coming from all over to be like, how do I sit down with you? Let me learn all this. So I figured when I get fired, okay, this will be easy. I'll have 40 clients my first month. Yeah. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. That's going to be easy. I got four my first three weeks. And I remember in the beginning, you know, a lot of us be like four clients in the first three weeks of starting a company where you had no programs, absolutely no yeah. testimonials, you know, no mm -hmm. experience like that'd be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Right. But for me, my ego was a little shot because I thought, well, I knew all of this. I'm well connected. And I remember being like very upset about it. And the next time I did it, uh, a conversion event, you know, a workshop of some sort, I, I got four clients mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. And then the third time, I got four clients again. Okay. <laughs> and then the fourth time, ready, here it comes. Four <laughs> clients again. And I was like, what is this four number? And I remember being, as a businesswoman, yeah. kind of like angry with myself and feeling defeated. But then I was just like, what is your problem? This is 16 beautiful souls who are trusting mm. you. And you're here to serve them and be a solution. And like, again, like really help them on their spiritual journey. And I looked at it differently. Are you willing to see it differently? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I realized within my first four months, I created a six figure income and I was like, oh, mm -hmm. this is a beautiful blessing, but I wanted 40 clients my first time. Yeah. Thank goodness. Thank literally God <laughs> that I did not receive 40 because I was not established as my own entrepreneur, businesswoman. I was not established as my own coach. I wasn't established as a brand. I had so much to mm -hmm. learn. And, and if I had 40 clients from day one, I would have lost it all. I would have crumbled. I would not be able to support all of them. I wouldn't know who I needed to be. And if I got what I wanted, it wouldn't have been actually of service to me. So God will never give you anything you can't handle. So the thing is, what you are going through right now, can you actually pass the test with grace? 
Like everything that it seems hard, can you look at it and say, is it happening to me or is it happening for me by me? And how do I want to do it differently? What works, what doesn't, and what do I want to do differently? And for me, my big problem was that I constantly kept looking for things outside of me to be the source of my success or my happiness. When we had the bankruptcy, it's because my husband did a big real estate deal and I just trusted him to take care of us. I don't know why, but that's what was my story and it didn't work. I thought I was going to, you know, make my millions by being this woman who was helping uh, my boss create a figure company. I was fired. Why did she do that to me? It didn't. It happened for me, by me. Like everything on the outside is literally my my imagination, my subconscious being projected. And so you have to take ownership in that and realize that everything that's not working out for you, what do you have to change on the inside? And so exactly what you did, you don't need other people's help because they're not even real. They are just an extension of you, right? They are you. So everything that you want starts within and you just have to shift. You have to shift. And so I, I, I agree with that, the vision that you had. And once you truly stop thinking about the how, like, do I climb? Will people save me? Will there be a ladder? If you just let go of the how and you recognize that it's you, that you all, nothing's created, nothing's destroyed. You already have everything within you. If you just go over the how, that's when magic and miracles pour into your life. When you expect them and you know that it's, it's your truth, that's when things will shift dramatically for you. But there's a lot of yeah. unconditioning. There's a lot of rewriting the script. There's a lot of things that mm-hmm. you don't necessarily need to learn, but you just have to remember, right? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. and that's the, the big part of it. But no, I mean, I that vision, it's 100%. That's exactly what I experienced too, just not necessarily as a vision like that. But that's my thing that I yeah. had to realize again and again as well. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. I think the the certainly for me, the most difficult thing is, is, is to, I'm going to use quote fingers, stay in the remembering, stay yeah. in the, in the faith of knowing, right? Cause there, it's real easy for me to sit in my morning meditation and reflection and just be that light, be that love, be that success, be that fulfilled yeah. version of myself. And it's another thing to carry that forth in my day-to-day life when it doesn't necessarily appear as the fulfilled version um and so remaining faithful to who i say i am and who i desire to be remaining faithful to knowing that that desire is already fulfilled otherwise i wouldn't have received it as that urge to create whatever it is or experience whatever it is and and that is that's a mind fuck sometimes because Reasoning and logic has you know? nothing to do with being, and that's very difficult yeah. for us. I mean, when I went to business school, you know, they're never talking about being and meditating and understanding consciousness, right? Like I'm paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to learn about marketing. When back in college, I had a flip phone. Now my whole company's on social media. <laughs> it doesn't even make, like the things that I learned yeah. did not serve me, but we're taught that that's the way to do it. And, you know, yeah. think about all the business coaches that I had. Number one of them was like, okay, before we do anything, let's think about who we are first, right? It was more so like, these are the, no. the system. Yes. Uh, so what is a system? Yes. Something outside of you. Why does it work for her, but not for yes. her? Because it's not an alignment, yes. right? When I teach my clients, right. right, I'm not ever saying like, here's the system. I'm like, let's find your system that's aligned with who you are and how you want to mm-hmm. run a business. It, it's completely different. Mm-hmm. It's not what you do. It's yeah. who you are. But again, you know, mm-hmm. I think, you know, a lot of our society and, and you can agree with me. It's just, it's a very patriarchal way of doing things. It's produce more, do mm-hmm. more, act more. And that will get you to a certain point. That is what made me into the self-made millionaire. It was doing a lot of actions, was taking a lot of things. It was going and going and doing and doing and and strategy and systems and all of that. But eventually you hit that level where you can't, you burn out. You literally Mm -hmm. physically can't keep up with it anymore. Because now when you are surpassing, you know, the first three levels of four levels, (laughs) it's a whole new game. It's not just the physical and mental realm Mm -hmm. anymore. You really have to be able to plug into the spiritual. And that's where you see possibilities. That's where it's a ocean of potentiality. That's where all things are possible yeah. that our brains can't even fathom. And so like you said, no. when we come up with reason or logic, how am I going to get out of this hole? I could dig, I could scream for help, I can get a ladder. Well, that's not really going to serve you because even that ladder is going to take a lot of strength 
and you're going to fall down many times. But when you have the ability to raise your consciousness and to accept and surrender that there's bigger things that are there for you, that's when you start levitating. <laughs> that's when you start yeah. going. And it yeah. does not, it's so hard because it's savvy business women who are very educated, who have done a very lot educated. of hard things mm-hmm. to get good results. Mm-hmm. It can really mm-hmm. like question us, like you said, be a mind fuck because it's not mm-hmm. logical. It doesn't mm-hmm. yeah. have reason. And that is, mm-hmm. that's the unlearning because you learned how to do the mechanics. Yeah. You learn how to do the practical. You learn how to do the technical, tactical, all of that. This, that, mm-hmm. next, that will get you to this version of you. But when you want to get, that's what right. got you here is not going to get you there. So what's going to get you there mm-hmm. is letting go of the reasoning, the how. It's, it's really accepting yeah. your truth. It's the Christ consciousness within you. That's yeah. where magic and miracles happen on the regular. Yes, girl. And that's where I'm at in terms of my career and, you know, the, and, and, and just my personal, my self personal journey. Um, it's, it's letting myself be okay with not knowing because I 100%. very much like to know. I'm very much an intellectual and, you know, I love understanding. I like to think of myself as uh, Sherlock Holmes of sorts. <laughs> Like, I like to figure it out and know yep. and understand and, you know, and, um, and, and, and with that being said, I love to step into something I've never, I don't know. So that's the other part of this is as much as I like to know, this is like stepping into something completely unknown and being okay with the not knowing and not utilizing my Sherlock Holmes tools from past you know, iterations of work or life and, and, and be like, all right, well, I, the tools that worked there so that I could understand and know and master that level of Mario uh, are like, they don't work in this level. And so I don't know where to find them or what to do. And so the, 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 the me that's grasping for that tool that once worked, that's not there is like, okay, so you mean, I just, I got to just be, just, just be still, just be silent and let it, let it arise. And, you know, and then take the action once it comes, like it's, it's a whole new great unknown and um it's interesting you know and yeah and and for me the 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 again I keep coming back to this the thing that I keep sort of grounding myself in if you will um is is faith is God right and the the knowing that I like it's all on purpose and it's all emanating from me for me based on this desire this purpose that I've been given however that wants to get played out so it's like yeah I I completely agree with all of this you know okay so yeah people often say to me Cynthia when I'm as confident as you are then I will do the thing and I always remind them that's Mm. how it works you do the thing and that's how you become (laughs) confident but here's the thing you get confident at this level The more and more you do this, the higher that you ascend, the scarier it gets. Mm -hmm. Every single day I I experience fear, but fear for me is not necessarily a bad thing. You can label it as, you know, a fear or you can label it as excitement. For me, fear is a feeling of growth because it means you're Mm -hmm. constantly going into the unknown. The unknown can be scary unless you do it again and again and again and again. And eventually you kind of realize that the feeling unknown is really just home. It's like, it's really being where you're meant to be. But I think what happens is like you said, the certain tools that got you there or here are not the tools that are going to get you to where you want to be. And so for me in the beginning, it was very much understanding like attracts like, you know, being that end result, law of assumption. And then it was very much about playing with my imagination. And that's awesome. That caught me everything I could imagine. But here's the thing, Mm -hmm. as I'm sure a lot of your listeners know, and if not, this can be very informative, but there's different realms that we go in and out of every single day, whether we are conscious of it or not. We have the physical realm, we have the mental realm, and then we have the spiritual realm. And we're all very aware of the physical. The physical is what's in front of us. But remember, the physical isn't who you are, it's who you were. Everything that you did in your past got you to where you're at. And what we need to know too is that the things that are actually in front of us, if we recall, you know, being in science back in high school, we remember that things are made out of atoms. They're not actually physical in the first place. Everything is vibrating, it's in constant motion. So nothing's actually physical. It's just how our eyes perceive it being human. And 
what really is interesting is, okay, so that's the physical. So many of us only focus on the physical, but the physical is actually the last phase of manifesting, right? If it's here, it's Mm -hmm. because it already passed through the spiritual and the mental realm. So then the things that really helped me, you know, vision boards and affirmations and playing with imagination and and really working with my Mm -hmm. mind to manifest made me the millions. It helped me to, you know, become the top podcaster. It helped me to, you know, find this person and get that speaking and da, 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 da. But what happens now is once you have mastered not only the physical and the mental, well, you kind of achieve everything that your mind can possibly imagine. Like what else could I possibly desire? I've I traveled the world. I have like the most beautiful relationship. I get yeah. millions of dollars in real estate assets, like, a t- you know, everything. So mm-hmm. at this point, if you've mastered the physical, if you master the mental, now you have to go to the spiritual. Mm-hmm. The thing is that is really fucking scary because it's the, yeah. it's, it's not about thinking at all. In fact, it's not it's yeah. about being like literally not thinking, controlling your thoughts so that your thoughts don't control you. Mm. Like you cannot at all, mm. you have to be. And even though you know it's where mm. it's supposed to go, it's terrifying. And he, the goal is not to be mm-hmm. fearless. When If you're fearless, that's dangerous. That means you're going to stay where you're at. That's comfortable. The goal is yep. just to walk courageously with the fear, mm. knowing the only way you can do that is like you said, I love how you said this knowing it's not about believing i would say fuck believing believing Mm -hmm. is just a thought that you have Mm -hmm. again and again and again like this is a knowingness it's a trust Mm -hmm. if you're Mm -hmm. going to continue on the path of ascension and really like being in alignment and and going towards that higher version of you you get to a point where nothing makes sense anymore like and if you have to let go of the logic and it's terrifying but it is i think that's again where you and i both are and we've the weird thing about the spiritual is you can go it's not just level by level by level it's like you can go up three and then down four (laughs) and i'm like Mm -hmm. it's like there's Mm -hmm. no rhyme or reason there because your brain your conscious mind can't fathom how this works because you're not in the mental anymore you're in the spiritual yep and it's bonkers it's beautiful you you want to just spend your whole time there but it's also like you got to be the physical like it's it's a very interesting part of the evolution and um yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I I have always said, you know, I don't want to be like a monk meditating in a cave because I like shoes and, you know, clothes and cars and stuff. Um, <laughs> but I'm like, oh, I get it why those fuckers stay in the cave the whole time because this whole physical thing is all, like if you're trying to do both is not <laughs> not for everyone. <laughs> you know, I am. Um, I am. Um, okay. Well, no, I mean, um, it's funny. It's as soon as you feel like you're getting it, you have this like moment of bliss, but then the the bumps come again. There's always like the bumps. And I think that it's it's there for you because again, it's to keep you moving. You're constantly, Mm -hmm. you're alive. You're meant to grow. So you have these difficult things come up and your job is not to react. When you react, that's throwing up your Mm -hmm. hands. You're going to hit the ditch. When you react, you lose your power. Your job is just to bring awareness Mm -hmm. to it and redirect and redirect and go in and say, why is this, am I experiencing this? What, what am I, how am I the cause that's creating this effect? And what do I plan on doing about it? And if you don't know what to do about it, that's because you're stuck in your brain. That's when you have to ask for help. Mm -hmm. You, when you ask, Mm -hmm. you will receive. And it's like, are you giving yourself permission to even be supported? Yeah. I am um, on that note, one of the things that occurred for me just in this last year um, around support is I was like, OK, I want to learn how to, you know, uh, leverage my skill and my wisdom and through my body of work. And so let me learn um, like luxury branding and, this, and, the, and how to market to a higher price point yeah. client. Right. So natural progression um, for a lot of us in business. And so being the good student that I am, I gave everything to that. I dove in. I got the A, straight A's, um, all the things. Right. And what um, what I realized what in that in that journey um, was that I was still following a formula for achieving in a, a certain milestone, we'll call it uh, success in at, from a physical perspective yep. and and it didn't it didn't produce the way that i thought it would intended for it to um i think 
part of that reason was like you because I wasn't I I I could I wasn't ready from an energetic capacity place for what I was intending or asking for. Um, but that journey led me what started out like like externally directed, it led me to the deep the, the deepest I've ever been in terms of self-reflection and, and self-realization. And what I thought I wanted, it wasn't actually what I wanted. Like, I don't want, a, you know, a, a bunch of clients with a bunch of stuff to do and a big team and all of these things. I actually want to do the deepest, most intimate work one on one with, I don't know, two, three people at a time. You know what I mean? And create art, have it be an artistic expression of this thing called self-realization. And um so it, 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 I've, I'm always, my higher self knew this, right? But that was the, the path that I had to take and, and, and sort of hit those rumble strips and, and maybe even like spend a moment in the ditch to then recognize oh, what the real, the truth of me wants, what my ideal self is, and really hands in the air, like surrender to that. It, my, we'll call it, um, ideal business doesn't look the way that I thought it should or or could based on somebody else's I don't know models and and theories and things of that nature so (laughs) I really had to come to that realization for myself of you know what I thought I wanted for years what I imagined many many years ago as an entrepreneur, like a one day kind of thing, who I was working with and how much money I was making and the way I was doing it. Like that was for a long time, that was a goal of mine. And then there I was like actually in the creation of it. It turns out that's not my dream, my ideal. And what you're doing now that does work. I I guarantee he's going to change again too. Um, I mean, that's how I I was. Yeah, it's an evolution. When I started, I was did very scalable models because that's what I was taught. That's, you know, what I did to help somebody else's company become very successful. And I, after it playing and and happening, I realized it's not what fulfilled me. And I felt like when there's so many people, there's not that many people. I can, it was hard to support everybody to the level to be able to help them get that result. And our Mm -hmm. clients' results are everything, right? Literally it's our reputation. Their success is our success. Um, well, I mean, from a business standpoint, when you get clients' results, it's where your testimonials come from. It's where referrals come from. That's yeah. why we're doing this in the fucking first place to help people get results. Yeah. So I started yeah. changing my model to be having being much more luxury as well. It was just May of um, last year that my most affordable offer was thirty six thousand dollars. My most affordable. Okay. Right? Like that was. Yeah. And I had tens and tens and tens of clients. Um, then you know something happened to me where you can't even explain it. Where I just felt the shift. I was like, I thought this is what I wanted and it was beautiful and it was wonderful. Mm. But all of a sudden, I think when you do have a certain amount of income or that need or that desire does get fulfilled, there's then a new one. So after, mm-hmm. you know, coming out of survival mode and, and the only number one thing I really wanted was, you know, to feel supported monetarily and to be able to provide for myself and my family to have a luxury lifestyle. Once that need was met, all of a sudden it's like, well, what's next? And then there's a new desire. And the new desire was how do I help more people? And I was like, but I already went here, but now I knew what I could, how to serve at this level to get the biggest results. And to bring that same kind of experience into a scalable way is what's now shifting it. So you're constantly like everything on the outside, remember, is there as a focal point for you to bring awareness. So it's going to change. It's going to change because you are a being of, of change. Like that's everything, right? Is about evolution. So it will change again, I'm sure. <laughs> I think, yeah. you know, for those of the people who are listening who are entrepreneurs, who are considering being entrepreneurs, um, this is the most fucking spiritual journey like you'll ever go on. You want to know what you love about yourself? Become an entrepreneur. You want to know what you really fucking hate about yourself or what you're good at, what you can't stand? Like become an entrepreneur. The highest of highs, the lowest of lows, the feeling of being so connected and supporting so many and then feeling so alone all at the same time. Like it's, it's the craziest thing, but I wouldn't change it for anything, but 100% my spiritual growth, my spiritual awareness, my evolution certainly has happened while being a business owner, while being the CEO, not only of a business, but of my life. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. That's been a huge part of it. Definitely. I love that you said that it, the entrepreneurial journey, the thing that I do <laughs> you know, to, to support myself and, and others. Um, it's not for the faint of heart. It, it, it truly, 
it truly, no, it's not. And it truly is the spiritual journey for me. It's the path that I'm walking through the, the experience of entrepreneurship is how I am evolving uh, as an individual. Because we can think of it like if we let go of spirituality and we can just think of it from a business standpoint, if something happens in a business and you're the owner, it all comes back to you. I don't care if the employee mm -hmm. fucked up, right? Well, why? Because you hired somebody who was supposed to manage them, right? Like it all comes back to you. Like no matter what, if something goes wrong, like you're the shot caller, you're the visionary, like you are the leader. So it's always your responsibility. You have to take accountability in that. And so when I, like I said, that makes sense to be the CEO of a business. But when you understand being the CEO of a business, you also are like, oh, how you do one thing is how you do everything. I'm also the CEO of my life. So when there's a problem going on with my family or there's a problem going on with my income or there's a problem going on with my, my health and wellness, like it's like, okay, whose fault is it? Can't point fingers. Can't say it's the employee. Can't say it's my mom. I can't. It's, it's always me. So like it makes you look at things that way. And when your business is something that is a reflection of your higher self, like, and your purpose, you, you really learn how to observe it and, and it'll constantly teach you what's going on internally. It's like the biggest mirror, your business. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. All right. So as we wind this particular conversation down, um, how... What do you hope that people watching this and, and hearing about you and your story and the way that, you know, how, how we value imagination, how we how we truly do sort of tap into that unseen to create what is seen? How do you want viewers or your story rather to impact the viewers of this conversation? You know, as you share with me and again, I, I appreciate your vulnerability and, you know, sharing about that vision that you had. I have a particular download that I got in meditation one day. Um, and if you listen to the podcast, if you're somebody that chooses to, you know, kind of look me up and see some of my live videos, whenever I'm done anything, I, I sign out. And it's kind of like, I joke around, like almost like, you know, Seacrest, it's like Seacrest out. Um, it's more than yeah. that though. It's not something cute. It really is my life mantra. And it came to me in meditation. And I always mm -hmm. say, acknowledge it, embrace it, see it through. And really today, what I want you to remember is if you're having that bathrobe moment, right? Or maybe you're more evolved and you have that, you just got fired moment or whatever it is that you are, you're in the ditch, just acknowledge it. Number one is acknowledge it. Okay. Your past is your story, but it does not define you. Where are we at right now? We have to just realize where we're at, bring awareness, not point fingers. It didn't happen to you. It's happening for you, by you. In fact, it is you. So let's just acknowledge it. Now let's embrace it. What is embracing it? It's listening to this conversation between Colette and I, and really asking yourself questions, giving yourself permission to play with imagination, to play with curiosity, to really ask yourself, like, who am I? Is it what I'm doing every day, getting me the results I want? Or am I not focusing on the fact that it's not what I do? It's who I am. Okay. This is making sense. I'm getting light bulbs going off. The wheels are spinning. Oh, great. Embrace that. But what good is information if you're not getting transformation? This is when you have to see it through. So after today, really ask yourself, like, did this resonate? Awesome. Did I get inspired? Great. Now, what the fuck are you going to do about it? Yep. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> and go, go read, go study, go hire, go look like, but just start moving. You're meant to move. As we said, if you have these feelings, these, these burning desires, it's because they're meant to help you move. And if you don't, I promise you, it is far more dangerous to stay where you're at than to make a mistake and get it wrong. You're meant to move. You're meant to grow. That is your purpose. And so, yeah, I mean, if anything today, leave with this, just like, think about what is it you want and start making moves, go for it, do something about it. And as I say, own it, claim it. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> yes, girl. Love yes. That. You are such a bright light, an inspiration. You understand things at a level that I think like you're meant to truly lead through your experience and you do that so well yeah. and 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 in such a way that it's just really easy to be with you even though you've got such a vibrancy right it's still it's not like oh bigger than that holy your message and that is also a great skill and a gift and so i just want to acknowledge you for who you are and 
what you do as a result of who you are, because it is felt, it is seen, it is known, and it is needed. So thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. I see you as well, Colette. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. All right, girl, we'll have to have part two of this conversation at some later date, and we'll celebrate a whole next level of Mario. Thank you for having me today. <laughs> Thank you for listening, everyone. Yeah. Yep. See you guys on the next one. Bye for now.